Magandang hapon sa inyo lahat. Ipagpapatuloy natin ang ating pagtalakay sa ikatlong most essential learning competency para sa araling panlipo ng 10. At dito papasok ang mga ginagawa ng ating pamahalaan, ginagawa ng gobyerno, ginagawa ng iba't ibang mga bansa upang matugunan ang mga isyu at karahasan o isyu ng karahasan at diskriminasyon na may kinalaman sa gender or sa sexualidad ng isang tao. Sa uh, <clears throat> mga naunang recorded lectures, pinag-usapan natin doon ang definitions or kahulugan ng gender-based violence. Saan ito nangyayari? Okay. Pinag-usapan rin natin ang kahulugan ng gender-based discrimination and yung mga general principles na dapat nating matutunan nang sa gayon ay makatugon tayo sa sa issue ng karahasan at diskriminasyon na batay sa gender at sa sexualidad ng isang tao. Dito sa video lesson na ito or sa recorded lecture na ito ay pag-uusapan lamang natin ang isa sa napakaraming batas okay, na mayroon tayo uh, at sinusunod sa buong mundo hinggil sa usapin ito. Mayroon tayong tinatawag na International Bill of Rights of Women. Okay? So, ito ay tapos natin, it is international. Ibig sabihin, ito ay sumasaklaw sa lahat ng kababaihan sa buong mundo. Okay? Lahat ng signatories nito. At ito ay dapat sundin ng lahat ng pamahalaan ng lahat ng gobyerno na pumilma, of course, dito sa Bill of Rights na ito. At ito yung natawag nating Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women or CEDO. Kailan nga ba ito na, na uh, pirmahan? Okay. Ito ay sa pangunguna, of course, ng United Nations at naging itong isang International Bill of Rights noong September 3, 1981. So, how does CEDO define discrimination? So, kagaya nung ating naunang, naunang lecture, okay, we say that discrimination is any distinction, exclusion, or restriction made on the basis of sex, so gender-based discrimination to, which has the effect or purpose of impairing or nullifying the recognition, enjoyment, exercised by women irrespective of their marital status on the basis of equality of men and women of human rights and fundamental freedoms in the political, economic, social, cultural, civil, or any other field. Sa madaling salita, ang discrimination ay tumutukoy sa lahat ng mga ginagawa natin o ginagawa ng mga tao sa lipunan na kung saan ay nawawalang bahala or hindi nabibigyan ng pagkakataon ang mga kababaihan okay? at ang iba pang, uh, iba pang mga tao na sabihin natin ay hindi pasok doon sa ating natawag na binary system of classification na men, women. Okay? At dito, pinapahayag din na equal ang tao, equal ang lalaki at ang babae sa lahat ng aspeto ng kanilang buhay, be it on political, economic, social, cultural, civil, or any other fields. Dito sa mga iba't ibang fields na to, if we try to make distinction, if we try to exclude, if we try to restrict the enjoyment of all the rights, etc., then we are committing discrimination. And when the basis of discrimination is sex, then it, comes, or it becomes gender-based discrimination. Ang CEDO ay may tatlong principles. Okay, ito yung pinakabataya niya, ito yung pinagmulan niya, ito yung kanyang mga guiding principles. So, first and foremost is the principle of non-discrimination. Next, substantive equality. And last one is state obligation. So, ang Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women ay ang batayan niya ay ang iba't ibang principles na ito. Ang una is principle of non-discrimination. So, ano ba ibig sabihin ng non-discrimination? 
Pag sinabi natin non-discrimination, hindi dapat tayo mag mag-exclude, mag-restrict. Okay? Hindi tayo dapat mag uh, pagbawal, okay? Sinasabi natin kayo sa definitions. So, the message is simple. Women all over the world shall not be subjected to any discriminatory act, isa, or discriminatory acts. So, maraming, maraming, hindi lang basta, ano, ha? hindi lang isang beses, pwede maraming beses din. When we say non-discrimination, it is an integral concept of equality. So, pag sinabi natin pantay-pantay ang lalaki at babae at ang lahat ng nilalang, ang lahat ng tao, kinakailangan ma-affirm din na hindi ka dapat mag-uuri, hindi ka dapat mag exclude ng tao based on their gender. So, kinakailangan ay we have to be fair in treating everyone. Okay? Okay, ito yung halimbawa. Job hiring. Truck driver available for men and women. Qualifications. Must have experience of three or more years as truck driver. Okay, so if we look at this job hiring, if we look at this job hiring, it seems, it seems that this is a gender sensitive uh, hiring, okay? Kasi, you look at here. The opportunity is for both men and women. Okay, di ba? If we, if we provide opportunities for men and women, karang sila may opportunities, then we are uh, acting gender sensitive. We, in, we leave this gender sensitive uh, uh, principle. Okay? And then, hindi natin, hindi tayo nagtatangi. But let us look at the qualifications. Okay? Must have experience of, must have an experience of at least or three or more years as truck driver. So this situation or this requirement, this qualification, makes it more difficult for women to apply for the job. Bakit? Because we seldom see women driving truck. Lalo na yung three or more years. So, pag tinanggal muna natin ito, hindi muna natin tinanggal itong qualifications, ito lang muna ang job hiring, it seems that it is providing equal opportunity for men and for women. But if we look at the qualifications, hindi na siya, uh, we, you are trying already to exclude women from this job. Although, makikita natin, this is available for men and women. Why? Because we do not see or we seldom see, lalo tigit sa Pilipinas, a truck driver who is a woman. Ang nakikita ko pa lang ay sabihin natin, conductor. Okay? Uh, bus driver na babae, hindi pa ako nakakakita. Conductor, meron. So, while the first part is gender sensitive or manifest gender sensitivity and provides equal opportunities for both men and women itong second part which is the qualifications ay it makes difficult for women to apply for this job because of their requirements so kahit mapansin niyo na may men and women dito mapansin niyo sa qualifications hindi pa rin niya sinusunod yung principle of non discrimination Okay? There is still discriminatory act happening in this kind of job hiring. The next principle is called substantive equality. What do we mean by this substantive equality? This principle acknowledges differences between a man and a woman, but it affirms equality. Now, in order to achieve this equality, the playing field should be even for men and women by creating laws and policies to reflect gender perspective and correct the environment where different opportunities for women exist. So, mapapansin ninyo ito ay nagre-reflect na agad doon sa mga pinag-usapan nating iba't ibang principles para matugunan natin o para maabot natin yung natawag nating gender equality. Okay? So, it affirms, una-una, may pagkakaiba talaga ang lalaki at babae whether we like it or not. But, hindi dahil sila ay magkaiba, hindi sila equal. Okay? 
Now, when we speak of both men and women are equal, so the opportunity should be the same for both. And we can only do that if we create laws and policies that reflect gender perspective. Okay, tingnan natin itong halimbawang ito. Night shift available. Earn as much as 10% of your wage if you work from 10 in the evening until 6 in the morning. Available for men and women. Contact human resource. So, here is an opportunity for a man and for a woman to earn more. Ha? Kikita ng malaki. So, parang may gender perspective din dito, ano? At hindi nagkakaroon ng pagtatangin kasi this is available for men and women. Now, let us look at the situation. Okay. So, if this is the place where you will work as a woman, madilim ang paligid, walang mga ilaw, etc., etc., mapapaisip ka. Magkatrabaho, mag-overnight ba ako o ma, yeah, mag-extend ba ako? Magna-night shift ba ako? Ganito yung sitwasyon, napakadilim nung pinagkatrabahuhan ko. Okay? So, that already makes it an even field. Hindi na pantay yung playing field for both men and women in that particular case. Okay? Alam natin na posibleng maraming mangyari sa isang babae na nagtatrabaho sa ganitong uri ng, ng environment. No. So, how should we do this? Or how should we correct the situation? Okay? Pag-usapan natin substantive equality, kinakailangan mag-create tayo ng laws and policies that reflect gender perspective and correct the environment kung saan na rin yung, yung difference na to. So, how are you going to correct this uh, situation? Okay. You provide lighting. Okay. You provide lighting and you provide, let's say, uh, guards to protect women para makapagtrabaho sila sa ganitong uri ng sitwasyon so that they can also earn more. So, you need to correct the situation where this inequality in playing field is happening. That is what we mean by corrective approach. Okay? Itatama mo yung, yung policies, itatama mo yung laws, itatama mo yung environment kung saan nakakaroon ng na an even playing field between a man and a woman. Certainly, in this first scenario, siyempre yung lalaki lang ang maaari makapagtrabaho sa ganitong uri ng sitwasyon. That is an inherent, ano ha, inherent difference. But, if this is already the situation, then women can already participate, women already has the, have the possibility to earn more because the environment is conducive for her to work even at night. Okay? So, hindi na nagkakaroon ng pagtatangi. Hindi siya, ano ha, hindi siya explicit yung pagtatangi, pero implicit siya. Just the mere fact na ganun kadilim yung, yung pinagkatrabahuhan mo, that will already make it difficult for women to work. Now, kahit siya ay hindi mo pansin, you have to correct that particular situation. And this is how you correct it. Now, you can add more. You can add more uh, amenities to protect women in this kind of environment. Thereby, providing them equal opportunity for or to earn more. Okay? So, kinakailangan, ito natin yung slide natin, magkaroon ng substantive equality. And substantive equality can only be achieved if we create laws and policies that reflect gender perspective, you know, consider yung differences ng lalaki at ng babae, and at the same time, they are equal. Now, hindi lang ano ha, hindi lang laws and policies. Dapat gumawa ka, okay? Dapat you have to do something to correct the environment where this different, where this uh, uneven playing field is occurring. So that's that's the second principle na pinagbabatay ng sido. The next one, the last one, is state obligation. Okay. Ang problema natin sa gender-based violence and discrimination is structural. Okay. Okay. Para siyang institutionalized. As long as patriarchy exists, okay, patriarchal thinking exists, 
there will always be gender by gender based violence and gender based discrimination and therefore kung structural ito the state or the government has to do something and when they sign or when the philippine government signed the bill yung international uh, bill of rights of women yung sido they are part already or they promise already to protect, to respect, to promote, and to fulfill the rights of women. Pag sinabi natin respect, okay, respect ang kababaihan, ang equal opportunities, ang human rights ng kababaihan, so ano ang hindi pwedeng gawin ng bansa? The, the state cannot enact discriminatory laws. So, hindi na pwedeng gumawa okay, ng pirmahan ito, nung maging, nung maging binding itong SIDO, hindi na pwedeng gumawa ang mga bansa ng mga laws na discriminatory in nature. Okay, kung dati-dati ay may mga, may mga batas o policies na, na nagpupromote ng, ng difference, okay, ngayon, hindi na pwede yan. And hindi na rin pwede na mag-engage in discriminatory practices ang bansa na yun. Okay? So, equal opportunity na dapat ang mga kababaihan, kalalakihan, members ng LGBTQ+. And dahil nga maraming mga batas, dati-dati ang nag-exclude, etc., etc., kinakailangan i-repeal ang lahat ng batas na nagdi-discriminate sa kababaihan at sa iba pang members ng lipunan. So, that is part of respecting human rights protection. So, kinakailangan meron ng agency that will hear complaints okay, of discrimination and gender-based violence. Kaya kung pagpansin nyo sa mga sa mga pulo, sa mga police stations, sa mga police stations, meron tayong mga women and children's desk. Okay? Iba pa siya doon sa pinaka baba magre-report ka ng, ng ng isang crime or isang accident, may iba ang na-attend. Pero pag babae, bata or ano, may sariling desk para dito. So isa ito sa mga products ng Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Then, of course, bahagi rin ng katungkulin ng ating bansa is to regulate institutions and individuals. So, the government now has the power to look at the practices o baka dyan sa DepEd, may discrimination, o baka dyan sa DOLE, sa DOST, at sa mga private institutions din kasi sakop ito ng gobyerno. Okay? At pag may napatunayan silang <coughs> discriminatory acts, the government can impose sanctions on these people and these organizations. Next, promote, raise awareness of the rights of women. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, uh, taon-taon or halos kada quarter may gender and development activity ang mga schools, so, part ito ng raising of awareness of the rights of women. And ito ay trabaho ng pamahalaan to promote, to raise the awareness of the rights of men and the rights of women. Then, of course, to fulfill. Okay? So, anong ganagawa? You have to provide also different opportunities, great opportunities for women. And then, of course, dahil ina-expect mo na ang mga kababaihan ay makakagawa o makakapasok sa mga trabahong dati ay reserve lamang sa mga kalalakihan, pinakailangan, you have to train women. You have to provide training for women para magawa rin nila yung mga trabaho na gusto nilang gawin. Na hindi nila magawa o hindi nila nagawa because before, tabu o hindi pwede nilang gawin yung bago na yun. And then of course, kinakailangan ang gobyerno gumawa ng paraan para masiguro na may patupad ang mga batas na kanyang nilikha para sa kapakanan ng mga. Ito ang isa sa mga actions na ginagawa o nagawa in international scale to protect women against gender-based discrimination 
and gender-based violence.